Hello and welcome to Mission TV. We're here recording on the exhibit hall floor of the 60th General Conference here in San Antonio, Texas. And today we have a very special guest. I've known him for a number of years and I'm really excited that he can be here. Chuck Holtry, welcome to Mission TV. Thank you, Jonathan. Glad to be here. So tell me a little bit, what do you do in ministry? Uh, my job is I'm a trainer in personal and public evangelism at Amazing Facts. Okay, very good. And how long have you been there? I've been working with Amazing Facts for about six years. Okay, and I understand that you had the opportunity last year to go overseas to Asia. I did. Could you tell me a little bit about sure that? Sure thing. Uh, last, last December, we went to Thailand and worked among the Karen people right on the border between Myanmar and Thailand. Okay. It was a um, fascinating experience. It was great. Life-changing. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. I, do you have some pictures? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, we uh, were in Mesa. This is just a, a picture of some of the scenery. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And also give you kind of a picture of some of the houses that were there. Okay. I, I showed this next photo because as we were traveling along a road between Mesa and going north to Mela Camp, which is a refugee camp, uh -huh. we'd see all these mountains off to our side. And they said, these mountains are full of people groups who have not yet heard the name of Jesus. And I just couldn't grasp that. I thought that that was a long time ago during the time of, you know, Eric B. Hare. Uh -huh. And I found out that it's still that way. There are still people groups in this section of Thailand, right along the highway in the mountains who have never heard the voice of Jesus, heard of Jesus. Incredible thought, isn't it? Yes, it is. So we, when we were there, we had a, three, a threefold goal. We actually were staying in a very nice facility there in Mesa. Uh, this is uh, just a, a picture of it. Mm -hmm. I've been there. We <laughs> were, uh, the people there were very loving. We were working uh, with the Mesa Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. Very loving people. This is a, one of the a parties they were celebrating for one of their members. Um, but this gives you a, the opposite side. This uh -huh. is some of the homes that we would saw along the road when we were in Mela Camp and other places. Uh -huh. So this would be more the the housing situation of those who are living in the mountains, right. um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was fascinating wow. um, just because I... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine this, what an electrician from the United States would feel like if he saw this. Chaos. And, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. And we traveled. Uh, this is our common form of travel. I, I know that there is a name for this. I'm afraid I don't know it. Songtao. Okay. Songtao. Thank you. Yeah. And we traveled everywhere in these. This was our, our main form of transportation. Mm -hmm. I had, didn't have a chance to experience this kind. <laughs> um, because always we were in the other ones, but we greatly enjoyed our time time mm -hmm. there. I put this picture up for a reason. This is the river that borders Myanmar and Thailand. Uh -huh. Now the people we we're working with are from Myanmar. They're from Burma, the Karen. It's a mm -hmm. people group, but they have uh, been persecuted greatly in Myanmar. So they come across this river uh, in various ways and are refugees in Thailand. Mm -hmm. There is a bridge that crosses over. It's called the Friendship Bridge. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that bridges these two countries. And the area in between, uh, you can see some of the people here, mm -hmm. this is no man's land. Uh, they're in between both places, and um, we actually had a chance to, I, I didn't think I walked there, I guess I wouldn't admit if I did, but uh, no. <laughs> so very, very neat. So on one side of the river, what you're looking at is Burma, and I'm standing on the Thai side taking the, the, the photo. Uh -huh. um, this is a Mesa, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. It has a variety of people, Karen, uh, Burmese, uh, nationals, Thai, mm -hmm. all mixing together. But the purpose of this church and in, the, in this region is to focus on the Karen people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just a few photos of, of their classes with their children, etc. This mm -hmm. is one of the youth classes, their children doing a program. While we were there, we did three things, and I want to just share them briefly with you. Sure. Okay. Sure. We, evangelism training. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of uh, training, from what I've heard, that is done with the Thai, but for the Karen people, not as much. Mm -hmm. So our goal was to train the Karen young men and ladies how to do evangelism among their own people group. Yes. Uh, we spent a weekend and then parts of another week doing that. Here is those who came for the weekend training, wow. and then there were about 12 of this group who actually stayed on consistently for further education. Wonderful. Um, they 
ended up helping us do the public evangelistic series we did. So mm -hmm. I did one or two nights. We taught them how to do it during the day. Then we had them do the speaking at night so they get a practice. I had no idea how little knowledge there is of basic Adventist doctrine. No, mm -hmm. let me rephrase that. Basic Bible doctrine. Yes. Uh, what happens when a person dies. Uh, right. uh, the Sabbath was pretty well understood, but a lot of other doctrines were not. And so mm -hmm. we were using this as a time to train them to do that. Wonderful. So, um, Wonderful. And this is just some of the training, some of the pictures that were took place. Our, our whiteboard wasn't working, so we used paper. <laughs> and uh, it was great. And yeah. It was fun to do. Wonderful. So evangelism training was a part of it. The other part was a public seminar. We wanted to actually hold a seminar. Uh, again, it was amazing. I was, sometimes I was wondering, why is my translator taking so long? <laughs> it's because he was translating into two languages. Oh. He was translating into, into uh, Karen and Burmese. Okay. And I'm not sure of all the details that go into that, but two languages while I was speaking. Uh -huh. So um, this is not the seminar taking place, but this is where it took place. Uh -huh. uh, you can see it's under a tree. Right. That, that tree there on the side actually covers the whole place where we were sitting. So at nighttime when we would meet, we were having a seminar underneath a tree. It was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, we would have roughly, uh, in er any evening, we would have around 100 guests. Two-thirds of them, of them were children. Wow. Uh, our focus was health, children, and, of course, a Bible seminar dealing with prophecy. Right. Those were the three areas. Uh, this is the, the previous one. I'll go back. That's the children's seminar, and we had some children teaching it. <laughs> and then we had a health seminar, and mm -hmm. followed by our public seminar taking place. And one of our students was actually teaching this night, so I was actually able to take the photo. So, wow. Wonderful. Uh, this is our team. They had a pretty good, strong team from the local area that helped out with the whole program. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We'd have people who come across the river at night, come and listen to the seminar and go back. Wow. Uh, just a really neat opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any questions, because I'm going pretty fast. I'm sorry. Go, go okay. ahead. You're doing right. Uh, the last area that I, I'm a teacher, and uh -huh. so the area that I feel probably strongest about we're going to see the most slides on is education evangelism okay uh, our purpose there is a lot of educational institutions that are growing up uh -huh. in this area specifically to work among the Karen people uh -huh. and um, we worked with several of them let me just share a little bit about it sure the first one uh, is a refugee camp called Mela camp uh -huh. it is the largest Karen refugee camp inside of Thailand 50,000 refugees and three square kilometers Incredible. Uh, it is unbelievable. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we had sent our passports uh, information ahead of time. We were able to actually get in mm -hmm. and speak at high school number three, which happens to be a Seventh-day Adventist ele academy, mm -hmm. elementary school combo. Mm -hmm. They're in it. They have around a thousand students. Wow. Uh, there are several high schools in there. Yeah. Uh, it's called Eden Valley Academy. And there is the main building. Wow. Um, it's amazing. No, Not I'm an the educator, and I'm building. used to working in a building that's made out of brick right, or block and cement. Uh, uh -huh. This is totally different. Uh, you've got bamboo sides flattened out, uh, a mesh screen, and, and you've got a, a tin roof. I was doing a week of prayer there with about 200, 300 students, and anytime something landed on the top, we could all could hear it. Yep. It, just, it was uh, amazing. Yep, and the tin roof is very loud when it rains also. <laughs> I'm sure. I wasn't there in rainy season, so I was enjoying yeah. not having that. <laughs> The blue curtains you're seeing here are actually separating the classrooms. Wow. So uh, it's amazing uh, that you have so many classrooms pulled together. This is one of the teachers walking down the aisle towards us in mm -hmm. traditional uh, garb, which I also wore a little bit when I was there, <laughs> uh, much to my enjoyment and theirs as well. <laughs> um, yeah. This is uh, some more of the classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the... Uh, this is where the administration are. Wow. They have everything covered up just in case there's leaks. This is the main school office. This is the principal's office. This is where the teachers hang out. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw this I, as an educator, I was just amazed. Mm -hmm. um, and they run a very successful program in circumstances Wonderful. that we would shudder at. Yeah. Uh, this is their library. Uh, this is the top floor of the administration building. Again, you can see the bamboo, bamboo slat sides uh, uh -huh. with the uh, tin roof and, and the, the screening. Mm -hmm. What you don't see is these are a few of the bookcases that actually are open. Most bookcases are closed, so the rats don't eat the books. <laughs> and that was uh, also new for, for me to yeah. see. What an incredible opportunity for education. 
Mm -hmm. This school is run by a lady named Helen Hall, and I don't know if I've got a picture of her coming up. Um, this is actually, uh, they had an orchestra, okay. before I get to Helen Hall, they have an orchestra inside uh, the refugee camp. Uh -huh. They're trained in violin or guitar. Uh, so okay. there was 300 young people wow. that would come to listen to the two talks I was giving every day. Mm -hmm. There was another 600 that were going around to other meetings that were presented by the team that I was with. So wow. we were meeting in several different sites throughout the camp mm -hmm. during that time period. Uh, just incredible. 200 young people at one meeting, all listening quietly, not saying anything. Um, mm -hmm. It was just amazing to me. Here they are singing both in Korean and English, uh, getting used to some of the music that we have. Yeah. So uh, a great experience. Wonderful. During this week of prayer, we had 60 young people get baptized. Praise the Lord. Now, baptism there is different. Now, they're getting trained all year long mm -hmm. in, in, in their Bible classes. And in their training, they learn so many things. But the call is made in every week of prayer for baptism. 50 young people, 60 young people made a decision. Wow. It's different. Uh -huh. They may get kicked out of their homes. Several of them did. Uh -huh. They may get beaten. They may have all kinds of things happen because they're choosing Christ. It's not a, a, a traditional decision for Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, they're seriously making a, a very serious commitment. That's a level of commitment that people in America don't have to experience normally. No. Because it's just not that sort of animosity. No, not at all. So. And, and this school is such high academics. This is Helen Hall. She is... Uh, uh, a native of Melbourne, Australia, and let me go back. Okay. Uh, came over when she was in her 40s, mm -hmm. and she is now in her 70s. Wow. 30 years of her life she's dedicated to working among the Karen people. Wow. Uh, just a, a tireless. I don't know how to describe it. We get tired. She didn't get tired. Yeah. Uh, she makes things happen. And her students have the highest percentage of scholarships of any other school in the camp. Wow. Uh, to go on and on to college. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a very gifted, gifted woman. These are just some of the students. Those blackboards are actually black painted plywood. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, there is a picture of Helen. Just an incredible woman for God. This is her kitchen at her own home. Wow. Um, you see a lot of cabbage in there. I eat mm -hmm. more cabbage there than I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> uh, just a really neat experience. This is the boys' shower house at her house. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> and this is some of the young people that are there. Two hundred dollars, U.S. dollars, will sponsor a child to go through Mella Camp School. It will take care of their tuition and their room. Wow. Two hundred dollars a year. A year. A year. Wow. One hundred twenty-five will take care of their tuition. Another seventy-five will take care of their board for an entire year. Wow. So these are some sponsored young people. Uh, there's a family, an Australian family, that helped organize this trip that I was with. Mm -hmm. uh, just makes you want to go, doesn't it? Yeah. You see these young people, just loving, uh, incredible. These are the teachers from Mellicamp. Okay. Now, I told you I was going to go fast, and I'm going slow. <laughs> uh, let me just share this. This sure. is uh, a group of people from Sunshine Orchard. It's another school that is operating among the Karen people. Uh -huh. uh, this is the home of the leaders there, some, of the, some more of their... This is the Taj Mahal <laughs> in, among the Karen work. Uh -huh. uh, just the well laid out grounds, gardens, etc. And they're working with a lot, among them being orphans. It's just a great work that they're doing with. In fact, um, these young people, you notice all these young people that we're looking at, they are just um, loving the attention uh -huh. and, and being with them. But they're needing more than attention. They're not needing some kind of short term mission trip like I did. Mm -hmm. They need someone who's going to go there and be there and make a, a, a significant impact in their life for years on end. Mm -hmm. Someone like Helen Hall, mm -hmm. someone who's willing to say, I'm going to pour my life into, not just a, a, a vacation into, but pour my life into this work. Uh -huh. So I was just uh, thrilled about it. Uh, Harvey Steck is, uh, is one of the leaders there, and he has chosen to pour his life into it. Mm -hmm. and it's just exciting to see that happening. Yes. Um, this is another group of people, another school, and this is the Sharon's. Uh -huh. They have several schools that they're operating. Um, Mrs. Sharon is operating one school with her family. Uh, the young man riding a bike there, his name is Travis, 22-year-old mm -hmm. running academy. He might be 23 now, running academy by himself, a school by himself. Just amazing the kind of dedication. 
yeah. uh, that is taking place. But they see a passion for the work that's being done. It needed mm-hmm. to be done, and so they're there. Yeah. Uh, for us, both Mellicamp, Sunshine Orchard, and the Sharons have given us an understanding of what it means to commit to the changing of the lives. And, and lives are being changed, mm-hmm. long-term change. And that's what we're seeing and, and I love to see when I was there. This, again, is a picture of our team. While we were there, Australia, Karen, and even American all mm-hmm. tying together mm-hmm. for a common goal. Yes. And I just, uh, I'm thrilled about what I've seen taking place in, in Thailand. Wonderful. So you've told me a little bit about your experience in and the things that you saw. I just have a question kind of going back in time. When was the first time that you were exposed to the need of missionaries in the foreign mission field? You know, I've heard about it my whole life, uh-huh. but I always thought that that was something that took place. Uh, past tense mm-hmm. and it, yes we have a few more places to go to but we're almost there and praise God we've got media that reaches every place uh-huh. and this opened my eyes to a whole new perspective so so before you went to actually see these people you kind of had the the concept that pretty much we're almost done with the work is that, well, is that see, correct I've been in a lot of countries that you and I would call Christian countries uh-huh. countries where Jesus is heard and yes there's a lot of need there and I would go do a mission trip there and that's fantastic but being in Thailand it wasn't just an issue of need and public seminar mm-hmm. uh, with those who already know Jesus but to give them a better understanding of the truth mm-hmm. this is people groups who don't know Jesus mm-hmm. that's a whole nother perspective it, it's much deeper and more than I ever understood uh-huh now, you know, there's something that I want to share with you that blew me away when I heard it. Um, there are about 7,100 language groups in the world today. Adventists have work in 946 of them. Wow. What's that make you feel like? Here's something that I teach when I'm in school. Mm-hmm. The ordained ministers are not the ones who will finish the work. Every person who is born into the Seventh-day Adventist Church is born a missionary. Amen. The work cannot be done if the membership doesn't do the work. Mm -hmm. It's people like you and I, Jonathan, and and many, many others who say, I'm going to take up the cause and make it happen. Absolutely. So what is it going to take for us as a church? Because, you know... From my, from my view, in North America, the church is largely sleeping and unaware of the need in the mission field. What's it going to take for us to wake up and actually do the work that God has called us to? Well, maybe I shouldn't say this on video. <laughs> if you look in Acts chapter 7 and 8, we see the persecution of Stephen, the, mm-hmm. ki- the death of Stephen, the stoning of Stephen. Mm-hmm. And then it says persecution, great persecution was taking place in Jerusalem. And then it says the believers were scattered abroad everywhere, spreading the word. I believe that persecution leads to the spreading of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for it, but I do know that that is a side effect. And that is something that may, may be the final result. If we don't do it in the daylight, you and I may need to work in the nighttime. Uh Uh, And that time I believe is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, that's so true. What you said that, um, we need to work now when it's relatively easy. Although it is not easy, it is hard, but it will only get harder as time passes. There is no easier time to do evangelism than today. That's right. Tomorrow will be harder than today and the day after harder than tomorrow. Yes. The easiest time to do evangelism is now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Chuck, is there anything that you would like to share with our viewers from your experience and having your eyes opened in what you saw in Thailand. There's a quotation in the book Desire of Ages, page 641, it says this, when we love the world as Christ loved it, then for us his mission is accomplished. Mm -hmm. We are fitted for heaven for we have heaven in our hearts. Mm -hmm. God is looking for a people who have his love. His love was not the kind of love that said, let me sit down in my home church in uh, Nazareth and not do anything. His love said, I must go. I, I, I'm going to go on a detour through Samaria. I'm going to go on a detour to visit uh, Phoenicia, the Sarah Phoenician woman. I'm going to do detours. I'm going to go where there's a need. And I'm going to let my heart, my life, my, my mind be poured out for work. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of love that Christ said. I don't get it. It doesn't come naturally. I can, I can do a lot of things right from the outside, but I can't change my heart. And that only thing that God can give. 
He can give that kind of love. Pray for that kind of love. Uh, ask God to give you that kind of love. That's what we need at this point. Okay. Very good. I, I agree completely. And, you know, being here at the GC, I've been so encouraged to, to see the emphasis on mission, the need that is there and the blessings that are there in service. Because truly, and I can say this from experience, there is no greater joy than seeing lives changed for the kingdom. Amen. In fact, uh, for those who are listening to this, might want to look up that quotation, Evangelism, page 333. Yes. There is no greater joy than doing evangelism and seeing people make a, make a decision for Jesus. Yes. You know, being at the GC has inspired me because as I've looked, there's this renewed interest in mission. But more than just that, uh, the, one of the three goals for the next quinquinium, mm -hmm. I think that's what they call it, uh -huh. is that we will have every member involvement. Amen. We need that Absolutely. now more than ever. Absolutely. Because Jesus is coming soon, and we can hasten that coming to the best of our ability yes. by every member being involved. Yes. If we are willing, he will use us. Amen. And even though we are broken vessels, he will use us. Amen. What, a, what an incredible thought Amen. that God wants us to be involved in his work. Amen. All right. Thank you, Chuck, for sharing. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Thank you for joining us, and I would encourage you, be involved. Pray for missionaries. There's no greater encouragement as a missionary overseas than to know that someone at home is praying for you. You've seen Chuck's um, experiences from his time overseas. His eyes were open to the need, to the many people that don't know about Jesus. I would encourage you, be involved, pray, go, send, follow God, Focus on him. He will lead you into the exact path of ministry he has for you. And remember, there is no greater joy than seeing lives changed for the kingdom. And not only is that joy here, but that joy will multiply our joy in heaven. And what a blessed thought that is. Thank you for joining us for Mission TV, live from the, G the exhibit hall floor of the General Conference session here in San Antonio, Texas. And may God bless you until we see you again.